Hey everyone, welcome to Therapeutic Tools of the Trade, day 27, and I have the lovely Jane here, who has very kindly um, offered to show us and share the work that she does with all of these amazing puppets. A um, little bit of game you can play for yourselves. There is one dog on this couch, um, the rest are puppets. Can you pick the live dog over the puppets? <laughs> because she's just decided that's where she wants to sit right now. <laughs> so uh, Jane is one of the psychologists who works with us here at 12 Point Psychology. And she, <laughs> that's, I, feel like that's, yeah, I feel like that's giving the game away. Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you've ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she, yes, she, she came preloaded with all of these <laughs> puppets. Yeah. Um, and it has just been awesome. So we have one of the puppets um, is a bat and he sits oh, out the front that. now. Yes, Mr. Gaston sits out the front with the admin team now. He's got a little name badge and everything. He's our count, Salah. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, and I just thought, I, I, I loved it. I've always been hopeless with puppets. Even the really, really simple ones that, that I used to use with kids, I, I gave up eventually because I was just so bad at it. And the kids, the only thing they got out of it was laughing at me doing it badly. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was just fascinated um, by the puppets themselves. I was just amazed at the detail in some of them. Look at this. Look at this. He opens and closes his eyes. It's amazing. Um, and with how you work with them yeah. with your clients. So I thought this would be a lovely forum to talk about that. So yes, welcome. Welcome. I should be <laughs> welcome. Um, so these are some of my puppets. Um, you can probably see Bruce, um, our resident ostrich, who's just lazing around in the back there. Um, we've got Rory, our lion. <laughs> Um, we've got, and these are just some of them, mind you, because I'm a crazy puppet lady now. This is our snail, um, who I'll come to in a minute because he's been quite popular and I'll explain why. He's so cute. He is very cute. Um, this is Joe, who's had a pretty rough, rough time of life, we think, with his ankle bracelet and his scrappy hair um, and a couple of teeth left. But he's um, he's very cute monster, what else? That's Joe. A lot of the kids do name my puppets, so some of them have very interesting names. This is, um, I think, Mr. Purple, which is pretty original. Um, or Purple Mick Purple Face. So, <laughs> yep. Um, this is a woolly mammoth. I, he hasn't got a name yet, so for those watching, nice. perhaps we could put it to a vote. I see a new naming competition coming on. Um, we've, yeah. Yeah, we've, we've had a fish naming competition we going have. on this week. I think it could well, be time for a woolly mammoth naming competition. So this, this little guy here. <laughs> what are we going to call him? What oh is God. his name going to be? All right, I'm definitely seeing a snuffleupagus. <laughs> but he's very muppety. He's he? gorgeous. Yeah. Um, here we've got um, a peacock, which I think got called Polly at some point. That's he's good. like alliteration. Yes. Yeah. Um, so this, this is why we have four goldfish called Goldie. This is, this is exactly why. So you'll see that a lot of these puppets have quite a bit of movement. Um, they are good quality puppets and you can use, um, you know, some of the $5 ones from Kmart as well. It really doesn't matter. Um, the reason why I bought some of the better quality ones is because they have, they look a little bit more like real animals or real characters. Um, and they also, you can squash their faces and give them better facial expressions than some of the ones that, uh, this one has a squeaky tongue, I think this was um, called Green Strappy Sock Frog. So very literal, <laughs> as some of my kids are. Fantastic. Um, so, okay. and this is a hit at the moment. So this is also Rory. So we have two Rory's just to make life confusing. Sure. Well, three. At, Oh, <laughs> sorry, darling. <laughs> oh. It's okay. all right. Not everybody likes the it's puppets. Not a, it's and that's, not a real dinosaur. That's sweet. okay, yeah. Especially with these tiny arms, he's not much of a threat, <laughs> despite having the very fierce teeth. 
So, apart from being really fun. Um, That's fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> so they, yeah, look, kids generally love them. Um, what I generally do is let the kids come to the puppets. Mm -hmm. um, so one day, you know, I envision having a stand with them on it mm -hmm. so they can see, but at the moment they just open the cupboards and they can see all their little faces and um, they can pick which puppets they would like to use. So it really depends on the activity. So with some of them, it's a bit free range and you can let the child basically pick out whatever animal they feel represents them best. Mm -hmm. um, and that can change obviously session to session. Um, so some of the more obvious translations of a lion, um, the stereotype of a lion might be that they're a bit cross, even though it's got a very cute, non-threatening little face, um, and that they're tough. So um, lions kind of tend to express things like maybe anger with the roaring, although there's not much of a roar that you can do with that little mouth. Um, and right through to um, some clients will pretend like this is a cat because I don't have a cat puppet and they'll mm -hmm. give me cats because I don't have Wilson here yet. Yes. My dog. Um, so some of them um, are a little bit more abstract. Mm -hmm. um, like orange dot frog. Black, orange, green, striking and black frog sky here. Frog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, generally these ones are quite popular because they have a squeaky tongue. Um, so this guy over here yes, I don't see how to squeak somewhere. does a pretty epic scream. Um, sorry. Sorry, Lori. Um, it's always interesting to see which like which puppets children will gravitate towards and which ones they will avoid, especially younger children. Um, there's some that they might actually find a little bit scary. So old Bruce over here is pretty big and can look pretty intimidating with his big orange eyes. Um, and some children will gravitate towards um, more docile yeah. ones like our little rabbit. I can here. definitely see, so one of the things, um, you know, from animal assisted therapy work is little creatures like, like bunnies. Mm. Oh, that looks, that's oh, such not look kind of it's thing. very cute. Um, <laughs> bunnies and guinea pigs and things like that are great for kids and early attachment work because mm. they're small and they have to take care of them. Yeah. You've got the tactile function. But working with rabbits and guinea pigs is quite hard because mm -hmm. they're very sensitive little creatures yeah. um, and it can be pretty rough on the yeah. rabbit or the guinea pig. Yeah. So, but working with these things, oh, my, I think I have to get the, the little rabbit. This is adorable. Um, that, yeah, sorry, but... <laughs> sorry. Yeah, no, he'll be happy. If I don't get a real rabbit, okay. he'll be very happy. Just a toy one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so what you'll notice about that rabbit, for example, is that the eyes are really quite big. Um, so some of the more modern puppets that you'll see coming through like these ones here, um, rather than these guys that are probably a good 15 years old now, um, have much bigger eyes. And mm. the reason for that um, apparently is that baby is proportionate to the size of their, um, their face. Their features, um, one of the big features is their eyes. And so it's meant to bring out um, some sort of maternal instinct towards um, or caring kind of instinct towards the puppet um, and make them sort of more human-like um, and relatable. So why oh, Disney princesses have the big eyes. Yes, um, yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so in terms of how I use them, um, I have kids that come to see me here from anywhere from four and up. Um, mostly it's my primary school age children that will reach for the puppets. Um, every now and then we'll go to high school um, aged person or a parent <laughs> yeah. who might be fascinated and want to break it up a bit, um, especially if it's a tense session. So these are good for injecting a little bit of fun and okay. in, you know, lightheartedness into the session. Uh, so our chameleon here, um, Boy George, um, <laughs> is <laughs> um, he did go to a boat, that's how he ended up with his okay. name. Um, little eyes come yeah, yeah, I was going to say, you might not be able to see it, but his yeah. eyes rotate. Um, he's quite realistic looking as far as puppets go, apart from yeah. the big tan hanging down. Um, but the idea again behind a chameleon is that in theory, unfortunately he can't change colour. That's all right. Ziggy can. Um, we can always get to it. <laughs> we can always get Ziggy. Yeah. Um, but the idea being, you know, that chameleons are quite adaptable and um, good at blending into their environments. So. You can kind of see how metaphors and analogies will be drawn from these quite regularly. Beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. Um, okay, so aside from 
um, it would just be such a fun engagement tool. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and do you enjoy using them in session as well? Does it give yeah. you a chance to flex your creativity? And... It, it does, yeah. it does, especially um, when the session doesn't go as planned, um, which is most times um, when it comes to the puppets. So I might have something in mind like a script, for example, for a child who's entering into a difficult social situation or has a transition coming up that we might role play that transition. Um, or for children who have difficulties with social skills, we might um, do some scripting and role play to kind of reinforce appropriate responses, yeah. um, right through to you know emotional expression, um, through to for some children will naturally do trauma reenactment um, yeah. as a way of um, we can re-script that trauma for them as well with puppets and. Generally, these guys make it a little bit safer. Um, so children will often tell yes. you things that yes. through one of these guys, um, because it's not really technically them, it's the puppet, um, that they may not otherwise feel yeah. comfortable telling you. So um, I could see there would be a lot of, because it's one of the areas where the animal assisted stuff works really well, yeah. is that symbolisation and distancing and making it safe to talk about, you know, um, um, sometimes we talk about Jersey and the, you know, the fact that she was in the foster care system and all yeah. of this kind of stuff. And we yeah. can talk about that and how she coped and transitioned with that mm -hmm. before we can talk about how it applies to them. And I can imagine that the puppets would, would facilitate the same type of conversations and yeah. with yeah. that safe distancing happening. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, if you're not lucky enough to be an animal assisted therapist, then maybe puppets is the way to go. It can be, this yes. Is gorgeous. I, um, I think animals and puppets in the same room is going to be challenging, um, especially because some of them do look kind of fluffy and cat-like and might be fun to chase, but that's okay. We've had some casualties in the past. Yeah, and I could definitely say I, I don't think I would work with puppets and Winston in the same room because <laughs> um, we have had some casualties with that, even with um, did the like the puppy pursuit game and things. Oh, yes. Um, okay. But I could also see, like Jersey, for example, she really, really loves um, stuffed toys. If I had something like this in the room, Jersey would want to mother it. Jersey yeah. would want to, to come up and snuggle it. And, That's really interesting, um, isn't it? So I, I could, yeah, I could definitely see um, it could be a nice incorporation. Or, like I said, yeah, if, if you're not lucky enough to, to be able to work with animals, this could be another way of, um, of, of really connecting again with kids and, um, and enhancing that, um, that symbolisation, which yeah. so many kids, if they've got social skills issues, if they've got trauma issues, the, 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 yeah, the symbolisation just isn't there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really nice way to develop that skill, I would imagine. It is. It's also really interesting. Like I don't do um, family work per se, but quite often when I'm working with young children, I'll have a parent in the room. Yeah. Um, so when there are problematic family dynamics or dynamics that need to be explored, again, that's where these guys can come in. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting to see what children do when they're asked to pick a puppet that best represents themselves, yes. but then also best represents mum or dad or a brother yes. or a sister. Um, and how that, you know, letting the child lead and seeing how that play yeah. um, evolves. It's quite interesting to get a lot of information from oh, yes. just that alone. Oh, yes. This is beautiful. So, is there um, anything else that um, we should um, we should know about um, working with puppets? Um, um, there's so much more. Um, <laughs> I did make myself a cheat board um, to my left here. So, I think we've covered off most of it. I think, um, but the what I will do, I haven't got it with me. Although I can grab my phone very quickly. Yeah. And tell you the reference for some of the stuff that we've been talking about today oh we can share that in the links afterwards if you want okay so if it's yeah yeah so i'll put that um in the in the links or the comments um the phone is too far away to see who has joined us live i think matt was on uh, but hello to whoever else is on there i can't see <laughs> i hope you have enjoyed the uh, the 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 introduction of, of these puppets mm -hmm. um rory's certainly very excited about the whole thing I'm thinking we could probably work with Rory and Puppets in the room. She doesn't seem particularly fast one way or the other. No. She didn't massively like the dinosaur coming into her face, but fair enough. That's okay. Uh -huh. yes. I think even even in, in a room, though, what we do there is yeah. be like, well, how do you think the dog might be feeling about 
Maru, the yeah. T-Rex getting up in yeah. your face, you know, and yeah. it can be a really good teacher of empathy. So it'd be brilliant. Yeah, it would be brilliant. Uh, yeah, no, I um I cannot wait. And yeah, I did I did see that that Matt, um, who is uh, one of the directors of Twelve Points, but also my husband. Guess what we're getting later. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for coming on and, um, and, and bringing all of these guys. Um, and, yeah, I get it now. When um, when all the clients say, uh, if you're missing one of the dogs later, they'll be home with me. Yes. If you're missing the rabbit later. It'll be home with you. Oh, he's so cute. We'll know where to find you. Although I do love this guy also. So thank you so much. Um, thank you to you guys for joining us. And we will see you tomorrow for day 28. Bye. Oh, you think we're done now, do you? All right.